Um, Charlie, so uh, what, I mean, in your eyes, you know, you, you're, you're part of NorCal Nursery and, and uh, you know, you play a really significant role in visiting farms. Um, yes, please. Yeah. In the state. Um, and I'm just wondering, um, and Wendy, you might want to chime in on this also, but um, June bearing kind of day neutral breeding, do you feel like, and, and actually this relates to you as a grower also, Mike, but um, do you guys feel like you're, um, you know, you're okay with the way that the future of the breeding is, is going at this point? Um, do you feel like the needs are being met? Do you feel like you, you know, so the Washington Strawberry Commission disbanded a couple years ago. And um, one of the things, sorry, and Wendy, you, you cut in at any point because I, I don't want misinformation, but um, the funding for breeding at WSU um, was, I mean, that was the main source of funds from a strawberry breeding perspective and that it's no longer there. And so um, some, you know, seedlings are being moved to the, you know, locations and, you know, that, that part of the program is, is shutting down um, temporarily perhaps, but at the moment that's where it's at. And so um, is there a need still for this? Like, you know, how, how best do you guys see, you know, kind of putting the pieces together from your perspective? Charlie, do you want to? Uh, so are you asking? It? Well, so you're part of a nursery. You guys are doing breeding now. Yeah, and our our breeding program is exclusively day neutrals meant for California, but we've recently switched gears to see if any of our selections can make it up here. Um, we don't have a June bearing breeding program, but we see a huge need for it from our customers um, to maintain that. A lot of our customers have done really well with uh, recent releases like Sweet Sunrise, Mary's Peak, Puget Crimson. Um, but there still is a need to fill those um, different time frames throughout, you know, to keep their seasons going. And I know that we talked a little bit about that this morning, but um, so with that in mind and a few other things in mind, um, you know, we just had a meeting which hadn't been held for a few years, but it was the Northwest Center for Small Fruit Research. I just gave a talk on, you know, one of the research projects that was funded through that. Um, and so that meeting, you know, it was in Ferndale and, um, there was an opportunity, there are opportunities for all the berry crops and grape to, um, look over priorities that are meant for Pacific Northwest needs. And, um, do, so with that being said, Washington had an opportunity to, um, you know, have a, a, a look at these needs and, and to kind of prioritize. And there was some movement, there was some, some discussion between Washington and Oregon growers, which was great to see. But um, I think, you know, Mike, you were at that. Do you feel like that was enough um, for you as a Washington grower um, to, to feel like your needs have the potential to be covered from a research perspective? Um, again, I, I'm so new to it in, in, in Washington, so small. Um, I appreciate any information we get out of OSU. I mean, I look at OSU, I'm looking for any information I can get. And some of the, some of the things, I mean, in our operation, um, we need to look at this multiple year plantings and how you manipulate plants. You mentioned plant manipulation for, uh, uh, to, to zero these harvest, uh, times specific harvest times uh i tell you i want to have a discussion with you uh I, breeding i don't expect anybody to breed for washington because we're because we're so small but the needs there the demands there the demand for the fruit is there i mean for the northwest uh i mean uh, there, there's all kinds of room so it's so it's really you know um to me it's taking whatever varieties we can get and hopefully working and at least have an open discussions on manipulations, uh, whether it's low tunnels, high tunnels, whether it's remay, whether, you know, row covers to, to, to gain it, you know, uh, five days. I, I don't know, but uh, it's, to me, it's wide open. Um, uh, 
So yeah, whatever we can get and whatever support the limited growers in Washington can be, um, we're all open. So again, um, you know, originally the Washington Strawberry Commission was process market. And so, um, but assessments were being pulled in um, for, you know, work for Washington growers. Um, do you, and anybody in the crowd can speak up to this also, but um, do you think that, I guess I'm wondering is how can fresh market acres, which seem to be, you know, um, increasing, how can those acres receive benefits like marketing and research efforts and legislative efforts? Um, and how does the fresh mark, like what, what type of access do we need or what do we need to create or in your eyes or your opinions um, to have that happen? It, is it needed and does it need, how, how do you envision it even happening? You know, in, in the Northwest, there's a lot of really small growers now. I mean, uh, Viva Farms, I don't know. It's, it's, it's with the county as, as a, um, uh, they have, they have ground and they're, they're educating, um, non-ag people how to be ag and giving them opportunities. Well, strawberry production, they're putting in little one acre blocks and stuff, you know, and they, and they hit the markets and they do direct markets. But, but to me, that's not really, addressing the the wholesale markets you know so uh the 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 few people that it would address the whole mo my neighbors of mine um, um it, it it's difficult to get them active you know you know what i mean they're they're real independent um where um as you can see i'm not so much <laughs> i know that the the market and the demand's there i mean um uh, um, with the quality, you know, Randy, you, you've got some really nice quality out there. I think you've really built, uh, and you have really loyal, loyal people that you're, you're, you're furnishing fruit to. That's exciting to see, but that just, you're, you're just hitting a, a small percentage of the market's stuck here. You know, I'm, I'm closer to, to, uh, Seattle and Seattle for me is the market, you know, that the greater metropolis area, Seattle, the Olympia, uh, and, um, you know, they, they, there are some people that want organics. They're, they're specific on organics. And, um, you know, I'm hoping in five years, once we're, once we're five years smarter, then, uh, then we'll do that. But, but, but right now, it's all about quality. California sets the market. We match that. And then we, with the flavor, uh, I mean, they're untouchable. Yeah, yeah it, it's funny because... When I say that, um, uh, the, the limited success we've had, it's they have to carry California in case I have rain events because I can't not yet protect against rain events. Um, but they're putting my stuff right in the front and the California stuff's in the back and, and man, they're playing it for all they're, they're worth, which is awesome. It's where we should be. How can I do it for 120 days? How can I do it for 150 days? Because once you get in there, you, you know, you got to cover them. We want to cover them. Charlie, do you have any thoughts? I mean, as you've talked to growers about um, the, you know, how best to serve fresh market growers as a community here? I think a lot of, you know, the larger growers have people in-house doing their marketing and um, they have people on the road. They're not necessarily sitting in this room and looking for um, collaboration, but I think you're doing the best you can do to provide venues for that, for growers to um, get together. I I think you should keep up the good work on that. And um, I, I if somebody doesn't want to attend, they, they, you can't make them. Um, do you guys, and raise your hand if you feel like, you know, communication has been good about getting you guys information on strawberries, particularly fresh market information. I mean, I know today we covered a lot, um, but does anybody agree with that statement that you guys are receiving the information that you need? Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's something that um, you know, it's it's always hard to wrap your head around creating a community again, especially after disbanding something. Um, and so, you know, a lot of those ideas are floating around, I think at the moment. And, and so I want to make you guys aware that that's, that's the case. And if you guys ever have, you know, suggestions or, you know, what you think that could be a possibility, um, you know, feel free, free to reach out. I know that, um, the Northwest center for small fruit research would be, you know, uh, another source for you to have some input in, see some research um, that's coming out of that program, um, but, you know, be able to get some, some priorities set for your needs um, because it's not a processed only like, you know, the Washington Strawberry Commission was. So um, keeping that in mind. Um, and then the newsletter, if you guys want to sign up, I have a, a sign up sheet at the back if you guys are not receiving the newsletter, but that's, you know, I mean, we'll try and like disseminate out this information as we're able to also, because I think that, you know, communication is key. So does anybody want to have any other input before we close down shop? Tom, it looks like you're. Hi, I'm, I'm Tom Pierbolt with the Northwest Berry Foundation. And I just really emphasize signing up or getting your your uh, contact information to us because we're we're really interested in in regional cooperation, but we need grassroots or growers to be able to to kind of connect you. So until that happens, this is what we can do. Uh, but it really needs to be Washington growers who are instigating it. And I think we can support what you want to do. Uh, I, so that's all I emphasize. But certainly I think Oregon is in sort of the same shape as far as this transition from um, process to fresh market, same in BC. BC's probably got more information to share with us at this point that you guys could benefit from. Yeah, and I, and, and, and I guess we just need to know, I, I feel guilty going to the OSU meetings, to be honest, because you have some great meetings and, and, and are, are doing more. So if I'm not welcome, just uh, you can tell me. To. <laughs> no, I mean, and uh, I think that, that that's a good point because, the, you know, those efforts that are going on in Oregon have been, uh, you know, it was the Strawberry Commission that, that had a strategic planning meeting because they were seeing the writing on the wall when it came to a process market. And so having those conversations and, you know, they're kind of rough conversations, but then coming out of that and pulling together some grant funds to start launching that was kind of the goal. And then from a legislative angle, you know, that was another area that um, them as a group were able to kind of pull together funds from that angle. So, you know, I mean, obviously we're all in the Pacific Northwest and we have similar needs in, in a way. So um, obviously, yeah, that is, that is a source um, of information. So I don't, you know, no one's going to be kicking you out the door if you're, you know, showing up at one of those meetings or field days. You know, I think that, that's, that's engagement. That's important. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Like just, you know, the, the one Oregon grower here, the, he just said that those are uh, ways that, you know, that communication gap, it kind of solves that too. Because you guys, you know, you guys have your own problems here that may show up in Oregon, you know, at a different date too. And so like having that means of communication, I think is pretty key. So, yeah. To, to get to an economy of scale, I think we need regional cooperation on fresh market strawberries, BC, Washington, and Oregon. I, I could not agree more. I mean, uh, it's just, we're Northwest production is, right. is really what we, we are. Um, yeah. 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 And you know, uh, the, the, the Oregon commission had their own crisis this year where there were the process growers. Some of them wanted to shut it down because that's still their support money. They're struggling to figure out how to support a commission on fresh market. Javier's position is pretty temporary. It's sketchy as far as with Washington, with with OSU goes. We need grower support to keep these things going. 
No, copy that. One thought I have just now is um, we have some sizable fresh guys in the Puyallup, Southern Washington area. Is there been any efforts to? Yeah. Randy, right. what, what did you, what, what was your comment? I'm sorry I didn't hear well, that. Well, we have some sizable growers in the Puyallup area, like the Two Spooners. We did. No, no. In, in, to say who's that. the sizable grower down there? Well, they grow like oh, 10 times spooner? more than I do. I know that. But yeah. Okay. They're all fresh, yeah. Right. Both, I think, but a lot more, a lot more retail than they have a ton of people down there. Well, I know we so, delivered into Puyallup. We're 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 shipping berries into Puyallup because they like our fruit. Late and, se late season or mid season? What what who we? What August? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They aren't growing any. They're just do you know they aren't. As far as I know, they aren't doing any okay. late season stuff. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they saw our fruit and they're saying. How many days a week can you come down? Uh, you know, good. so. Yeah. No, uh, there yeah, are I, not enough acres to supply the demand when you have really nice fruit in August. We, I, right. uh, like I say, we, the guy got out of his car and he said, I'm not sure we can sell a berry. I'm going, you wait, you will sell a berry. And they took everything. He goes, we want, we want it all. And uh, um, he goes, you just tell us, you know, what it, what you need to supply us, which was uh, nice. And that was just, like I say, one small little chain. So my 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 worry is is using distribution because you know it's 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 complex. It's it's distribution takes time, but fitting into the system. Because I do not want my fruit sitting on some dock overnight and then being delivered, you know, two, three days down the road. And my name's on the flat, our name's on the flat. And, that, and they say, yep, that's Northwest Fruit. So, I mean, there, there's got to be some education or, or dealing if you're dealing with Charlie's. And I think Charlie's is, is good or um, what was the other one? Yeah. Yeah. So just, um, I appreciate the post-harvest discussion and, and packaging is another one. To be honest, I don't want to go into a clamshell if I'm going to look like California because they see clamshell, they go, oh, California fruit. I don't think, you know, they don't, they don't even read. Um, but bruising is an issue. So, um, you know, in exposed packaging. So, those are things I'd love to have discussions on how we're going to make, you know, the direction as a fresh market to, 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 to really, um, so they know when they look, Hey, that's Northwest fruit right there. You know, whether it's Oregon fruit or Washington fruit, I, you know, I don't care. I, I, I look at Copper River salmon and what they've done. I've looked at uh, Walla Walla sweet onions, what they've done. Pacific Northwest strawberries can be 120, 150 day crop and people love them. So anyway, 